terms of the presentation, our supply chain is a thing of the past. Really, it's, it's a statement. You know, are they, are they a thing from the past? Is it our supply chain really a source of, from nature? A source from where our core ingredients are, as whether it's from the human race or whether it's from the animal kingdom. So I'm going to touch on that slightly for the first couple of slides and try and bring that in the context of the business world and, and markets. The second part I'd like to touch on is supply chain in terms of the challenges we have today. What type of, uh, what, are, what are we dealing with in terms of the marketplace as it stands? And the last piece is the future, short term, long term view of supply chain. Now, I should say from my point of view, I'm lecturing, but I'm also uh, working in the cosmetic industry. And for me, I have no interest in the cosmetic industry. I don't have any major knowledge or skill in terms of cosmetics, but I understand supply chain. So that's what you bring to the whole kind of relationship between business world and what we do. So that's that piece. Simple slide. And what have they got to do with the supply chain? Well, what we can learn from ants, they've been around 100 million years. They were farmers 50 million years before we were. They tended, they herded. They form super colonies. They can move objects 50 times their size from one uh, in terms of their body weight. And they're army-like and defensive in terms of territory. Could be human. Could be something that we relate to. When we look at the relationship between ants and humans or in terms of their, their, their makeup, a couple of facts in terms of ants I'd just like to highlight. They're very well organized. Uh, they have strong, very strong levels of communication. They utilize their capacity to its total. They're able to handle large volume of material from A to B. Finally, they have commitment. When they start the job, they don't finish. So when you put that in the context of supply chain and bringing it back to the business world, they're the very essence and core elements of supply chain that we need to be bringing forward. So what we borrow from ants or animals like that in this situation is they're not, they don't limit what they do to their size. So they're, they're looking at far beyond, well, they're not necessarily looking, but certainly they're, they're prepared to manage far beyond their world and their capacity and size. They t they're teamwork elements. Some of the parts are greater than the individual. They plan ahead. They stock up for a rainy day. So in terms of supply chain, how we manage our supply in our markets, we look at that. Uh, they complete a job before stopping. They're, they're all organized in terms of how they do things. They communicate with each other, and they have scalable solutions, and they use their own technology to its fullest. They're all elements that are existing millions of years before we did, and they're all part and par parcel of the supply chain. If you look at the common where we are today within the supply chain, it's all about the balance, the balance between uh, the different organizations, the pulling between the different procurement organizations, the manufacturing organizations, what priorities we have, uh, who's, who's got the, the fo where the strategy of the company is and who's got the focus. This is something that should be an inward and an outward uh, looking statement. In terms of organizations, one of the things that we often fall on and fail on is that balance. It's striking the balance between those two. In terms of the challenge, it really is a challenge for, for supply chain leaders and supply chain organizations to be con in a continuous state of assessment and looking at and evaluating how they're performing within the market. There are familiar traditional stat tools that are used, Porter's Five Forces, Test Cell Analysis, Lean, Six Sigma, etc. And they're all used to analyze how that balance is between the inward and the outward. Responding to that environment. Just a quick couple of slides on, on lean. In terms of lean solutions, I mean, it's a buzzword at the moment. It's, it's, it's a word that's used very fluently and easily in terms of this. And I, 
you know, a question, do we really Im implement Lean Six Sigma or Lean processes, or are we just using it as a way to just maximize processes and how we do things? Lean looks at the elimination of waste in the supply chain. We, sh we should be focusing on value. We seek out the technology and advancement to provide competitive advantage. A transparent supply chain. Uh, we need to look at where is it, why is it shared with our, both our suppliers and the customers in terms of transparency. Lead time reduction, continuous challenges to all the businesses. Flow, how we manage the flow and the level of SKUs within our environment. Are we looking at the peaks and SKUs and are we looking to try and level set that volume out? Supply chain models, are your push or pull system? Velocity shipments. So one theory would be that more frequent and smaller shipments to do. And the process uh, disciplines with partners. Really, when we're talking about partnership, we're talking about like an orchestra, playing as one, working together in the same strategy and the same uh, goals and, and targets. Total cost management. This is one area where you've got a uh, challenge in terms of well, if I stay within my organization, do we keep it within the organization or do we share it across all of the different groups? That's an area where we can actually benefit from, uh, where it's all benefit from the one savings that come forward. And then partner roles. Uh, the 3PLs now play a more uh, than just a delivery role. They've got skin in the game in terms of they provide more services, they're expanding the services that they're out, that they're involved in. They're customer facing. So where that, where that line of ownership fall, falls is a, is a key thing. You can see here that it's a, the structures that serve a multi-channel uh, customers. And there's a lot in terms of retail, uh, online stores, uh, supply chain technologies and the retail facing. Well, I want to focus on a couple of things just in terms of the outward element. Challenges that we have are multi-demand. It's a product availability and choice. Our customers today, at the push of a button, can literally pick anything they want or any product they want. Our challenge is to be able to satisfy that. The digital age, it's forcing companies to play in new markets through websites, social media, and online platforms. Companies are now in a position where we, we, we have to get involved within uh, the online digital world. And not all of them want to go there, and there's a resistance in some cases, but you know, these are things that we're, we're developing and it's changing as we go. Suppliers' strengths and weaknesses. We need to understand what our suppliers' strengths are, what their weaknesses are. It's not to, to gain competitive advantage, at least to save off the competition. The geographic politics and policies. In a global world, I mentioned the digital age, we now deal in a marketplace that's a global village. So in that context, we need to understand the politics of the, of the countries, and we need to understand the policies. The environmental challenge. We see the weather today as it is. Uh, you see it, the type of things that are happening. Say, for example, in New York with the snow, the resources and the risk planning that has to go into strategically making sure that you're not, your supply chain is not disrupted or broken by this type of thing. And satisfying your customer's needs. This is essential. This is the core part of any business is to look at the customer needs. But the challenge here really is the customer needs are changing. If you want to see where the customer needs are, look at the next generation. Look at a 14-year-old or a 10-year-old. On the news today, you're looking at kids with iPads who are already using iPads more than TVs. So the, the new generation of customer is totally looking at a, a view of in immediate access to what they want. They, they can literally look at global across the world what, what's available to them. Plus their expectation is different. And adults in this room, would all, we all realize with children, their expectation has completely changed now. And when we look at what we provide in terms of customer, to our customers, 
We have to think down the road. We have to have that vision. I'll talk a little bit later about vision in terms of future trends. So in terms of future trends, one of the discussion points out there is the augmented reality and order fulfillment. Basically, that's a blurred line between where does order fulfillment start and who does it and who, who's responsible for it. You're, you're, it's a crossover roles between logistics providers where they're providing direct access, direct space time with the customers, but they're also uh, doing order fulfillment activity for you, improving responsiveness and empowering your supplier. The mega trends. Mega trends are the in terms of they're going to have major impacts in terms of what, what goes on. Movement around the world, people are, are moving more towards city culture life. We can see it here in Ireland with the whole discussion about country life and our businesses going out in the country and where's all the investment going into cities and so on. If you look at that across the globe and you look at the catastrophes that can hit different countries, those mega trends are going to have a direct impact on all supply chains. The other piece of that is an interesting paradox. Because of that, we now have a much more interdependent relationship between uh, the network that exists. So if you're talking about moving food, or if you're talking about moving goods into a city, it's that relationship inside the city in terms of delivery, in terms of how we communicate and what we offer our customers. Integration via the internet. As I mentioned earlier, fingertip shoppers immediate payments. There's two sides to that. The concern and the, the, the risk here is the fingertip shopping, you can go anywhere. You have the power to, to choose where you want to go. The plus side of that is that you get immediate payment. So there's a nice opposite to that same coin. Sustainability. The demand for environmental friendly solutions, uh, regulation, constantly coming up to this now. Um, the demand is more about the fact that customers are expecting to have long-term solutions, so eco-friendly solutions. We don't want looking at the waste element of how we manufacture and how we do our business. The regulations is from a government point of view, more and more, whether it's in the health sector or whether it's in the food sector, it's regulations to make sure that everything is done according to standards. We look at transparency from sources of, of meat, of where they come from, what, what the animals are fed with. You can look back through that, and that's the element of uh, supply chain that we also have to look backwards as well as forward. Partnerships, co more collaborations in the supply chain design. We're going to see a lot more of that because that's where we get the benefits for different organizations. Expanding the service, I mentioned this already, 3PL is another service provider. Reshoring. So reshoring, we're looking at uh, faster fulfillment demand. So bringing supply back into country, maybe through warehousing, uh, where you have immediate shorter term delivery points. Short term challenges and risks. Uh, interdependency in terms of economy. So you look at China, the stress that that downturn of their economy would put on the supply chain. The lean supply chain challenge. Are you really applying the lean supply chain? That's a question for each individual organization to ask. Am I just using it to improve my processes? Well, then call it process improvement. Or commit to a lean supply chain. Switching strategy. It's not only about the lowest, but it's also about the industry and the actual complexity within the industry. So when we, as an organization, when we decide to switch our, our operation, our strategy, it's the impact that that's going to have on us. Competition in the marketplace. Amazon are rumored to be investing in, in as a big player in overnight parcel delivery service in, in the US. They're talking about buying their own airplanes and so on. So you look at that, that's competition you have to be aware of within any of the industry sectors. The digital t challenge. So the traditional models of e-commerce, which e-commerce was around a long time, but m-commerce is where it's really at. In terms of the next generation through, when you see them on the phone, that's where you're going to see business being carried through. So in terms of the future, short term integration into organizations and IT systems, tailored solutions, consumers expect more, and sustainability. 
key to gain, gain competitive advantage. The logistics and intermodal solutions, if we, as I take an example, direct selling requires an end-to-end -end solution to the doorstep. So that requires that inter, intermodal solution. Long term, if a society continues with mega trends, the supply chain will dramatically change. Science fiction is on our doors. We have to think in terms of what format will, will food take in the future? Uh, that may seem a little bit off the wall, but in terms of food, uh, if you're an astronaut, the, the rehydration of food and how it's packaged in parcels, that could completely change the food industry and how we manage the logistics and how we manage that supply chain. What way will the consumer behave the behavior change in, it, in every home if it has its own 3D printer. We have to look down the road. So in conclusion, we can learn from the past, not just our own history. We need to keep fingers on the pulse in the market, inside and out, and have to recognize and identify supply chain role that plays the role in the future, short and long term. Thank you.